Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, welcome back. And uh, this time around we're gonna to go to Gabon. So you probably know by now that uh there's a military coup happening at Gabon, a country that most people do not even know exists. And uh, now I'm gonna tell you more about this country and uh what has happened, and probably you will have an idea what is happening, what happened, what is happening, and uh what is probably going to happened uh let's start off with the first thing we have to go to before the military coup happened to understand what happened so they have a election a presidential election where this this guy let me zoom in a bit this guy president bongo uh is seeking his uh third term so He's he gonna you know elect and run against his biggest ri biggest rival, uh, Albert Ondo Osa, and uh, basically has, uh, built an alliance of all the opposition candidates into, to to support only him, to finally bring down Ali Bongo Ondimba, which is this guy, and um, so around. 850,000 voters out of 2.3 million is eligible for the voting and they vote and however something weird happened after that the Gabon the government blocks the internet access and impose curfew during the election voting so they cut internet access and announced the nightly curfew as the voting drew to a close why you know interesting question right no why would you want to close off the internet no while voting is ending and and immediately the opposition leader uh, albert ondo osa denounced that there is fraud in this battle for the presidency and um so he 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 led the race of 14 candidates and everybody is going to support him and um uh, yeah after you no know, casting his vote, uh, this Osa guy, uh, this opposition guy, uh, went on social media broadcast to tell Bongo to step down and he can guarantee his security. He's very, very confident. He thinks that he's 100% going to win. J then two hours later, the internet was cut. And then the communication minister, uh, Bisawo, went on state television and announced that they're cutting the internet and there will be a 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew freaking good democracy no no this is the most freest election i've ever seen <laughs> and uh and um, they say that these actions were the counter spread of calls for violence and false information and uh and a three-day notice will be required for any meeting or demonstration so basically they are suppressing everyone weird right and on top of that after after in they block the internet they start to block broadcasters they don't even want to let you watch tv now uh three three of the french state-owned broadcaster was suspended for you no know, call for violence and false information and they say that this broadcaster this frenchies these french people have a uh, lack of objectivity you know and uh they, they are not balanced in their treatment of the information uh in connection with the general elections and uh they didn't say that uh, this suspension will be permanent or temporary but it looks like this french uh media probably have forecasted maybe who will win you no know? and um yeah so the the three com uh, the three stations are french uh france 24 radio france international eh? and a tv5 monday so obviously the you know the opposition opposition candidate is very unhappy he said that uh, no he is the winner he he was interviewed by afp and uh, uh no no the who the i think the the cge i think this is the election uh election uh organization or the agency refused to no they were interviewed called by afp and but they refused to indicate the progress of the counting very transparent uh, election and uh, then no time and schedule for the proclamation of official results super transparent and uh and then 
they they kept postponing the the closing of the polling stations totally legitimate and uh and uh, some open until very late and then they suspended the internet they declared a curfew no totally normal kind of thing uh, in a proper democracy <laughs> and then so yeah so you no know, things are looking really horrible and then finally the result came out you know after two days two three days the result is out and uh surprise surprise the the incumbent have won the third term so this guy is not the new president this is not the president this is the guy that come out to announce the result uh, so the cg is the Gabonese election center okay uh center gabon election so anyway uh surprise surprise he won 64.27 percent of the vote and he needed to shut off the internet and the tv stations i'm so surprised and then immediately obviously the opposition denounced it as fraudulent you know clearly right no it's it's a uh, yeah not clearly you know it's a proper election like right? this is just a normal e election and uh so and uh of course because it is so legitimate the military can't take it anymore they seize power in gabon so uh the president of gabon ali bongo ondimba has been the this post by a group of senior military officers so um so basically after the broadcast you know the the military just thought okay he played you no know, he played cheat again so they take him down so he took it out and they they declared that in the name of the gabonese people uh, they have decided to defend the peace by putting an end to the current regime and they immediately also closed all of the border and dissolve all state institutions so basically uh, military take over everything and uh, the official statement you know, this is them uh, making the statement on live tv and uh, the statement they go through they said he said uh, today the country is going through serious institutional political economic and social crisis that sounds like everything uh, on the gabon 24 and uh, he's read by an officer, you no know, flanked by army colonels and elite Republican guards, soldiers, and others. He said that the election did not meet the condition for a transparent, credible, and inclusive ballot that is so much hoped by the people of Gabon. And I wonder why is it? It sounds perfectly fine to me. <laughs> they decided to defend the peace by putting an end on uh, to the current regime. And uh, he's speaking on behalf of the Committee for the Transition and Restoration of Institution. Basically, uh, a committee that he formed himself. And so he's also broadcast on Gabon One Public TV. And he said that the GE, the general election for the 26th of August, and its results are cancelled. Because it's not legitimate to him. And uh, all the institution of the Republic is dissolved. The government, Senate, National Assembly, Constitutional Court everything until further notice so including the border which i already mentioned so this is the guy this is the leader now this is the leader the new strong man Oli Nguema. i believe that's how you pronounce it so bridge clotier Oli Nguema was uh, declared um, the head of the military junta and uh, so who is he? You may be wondering, you know, I also wondered. So uh, let, let me tell you, he's one of the most influential figure in Gabon. Uh, he's a son of a military officer. He trained at the Morocco Royal Military Academy. And uh, apparently this academy is pretty prestigious. So he's very close to the, uh, the this disposed president's father, uh, the late president Omar Bongo. So then you know, Ali Bongo, after coming to power, uh, Nguema was accused to be you no know, part of this uh, attempted coup by another general. So he, there was a trial, then nothing happened to him. He was uh, no involvement was established, but he was still removed from the post and sent to be a military attaché, uh, attaché in Senegal in the Gabonese embassy. So basically, sent him far, far away so that he cannot be involved with local politics. And uh, finally, he was back to gabon and this time around he was the head of the secret service which is a good idea and then so then in 2019 he was appointed the head of the republican guard 
which is the elite unit that take care of the president's uh, security that vows uh, the president loyalty so uh it seems like you know he he managed to you know convince the president that he is a good guy you know he's his friend uh he's a bff and uh and it's hard to imagine why not because apparently uh this only guy is also the cousin of this oyster president so he was a bodyguard to the his late father and then uh, and it's also a cousin so you know his family you know they are all they are all family you know they are the family so um so so bongo you no know, was very upset you know he 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 finally you know after so much difficulty in shutting down internet and uh, tv stations to finally win the election he 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 put a video out appeal he said i'm ali bongor odimbar president of gabu i'm sending you a message to all friends that we all are over the world tell them to make noise for the people here who arrested me and my family he said so um he he asked the world and the friends uh, to make noise for him for a country that most people don't even know exists for a president that nobody know exists as well so yeah so that's what happened and uh, it created a lot of memes and jokes because uh, that makes zero sense why would anyone want to make noise for him so and uh, the opposition leader alleged that no this is just a made up thing this coup is fake you no know, this is the opposition leader this is the the, the the guy that i was mentioning about he said that this uh this is the family of the oyster president engineering his removal from power so that they can continue to control this country so so you know he he's very convinced that you no know, he won the election and this is just a ploy to prevent him from becoming the next president and uh, i have to say it was very successful uh, but whether is it you not know, a family family internal arrangement you you decide for yourself i will tell you more about it so the but the people are happy you know the population are celebrating the downfall of, of the bongo 53 year dynasty so the, the images of the civilians are celebrating you know uh, go all around the globe you know when they see the oh gabon cool but all they see is people celebrating you know? everybody is very excited and uh, they are all clapping and uh, cheering on the military you know they are very very happy and uh, so even you know, when the soldiers went past the, you know, everybody was cheering for them you know, Al Jazeera immediately you know uh, saw you know, they take footages of the people you no know, jubilation in the streets they even interviewed uh, the shopkeeper uh, Viviane and boy so he said long live our army he said jordi di Caba. oh that's, that's that's another person you know walking with the friends and you no know, i am marching today because i am joyful after almost 60 years the bongos are out of power <laughs> say julius libigue uh, uh i'm unemployed 27 year old and uh yeah he's unemployed so clearly he's not probably not very happy with uh the president you know but of course nothing is his fault it's the russia's fault no it's is is the russians and uh so the dinobu the 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 president of nigeria though and uh also the leader of the ECOWAS was like you know very uh disappointed i would say he said that you no know, autocratic contagion is now you no know, spreading across africa and he's committed to working with other head of state to defend democracy and uh I'm not sure what kind of democracy that he's talking about. Uh, the the kind of election that you no know, shut off internet and uh kick off TV stations away, you know, and uh to to set curfews in the middle of an election. That kind of democracy democracy that he's trying to defend. Mm, I I don't know. So uh, this is basically his first response to this coup, and uh, and the uh, spokesman basically say that no. Tinubu will be watching the developments unfold in Gabon uh, very closely and have a uh, deep concern over the country's social political stability. Yeah. 
I'm not sure if he really cares. Uh, uh, because there's a Niger just next to him. Uh, that he should care more, I would say. And uh, and and I also want to highlight about the relationship between France and uh, this uh this president that was oystered. So um it the French were actually very friendly with the father. But then ever since the, the this son took over, they started to, you know, investigate, you know, ill gotten gains though know, in uh by his father. And then then after that, over the span of fifteen years, start to you know seize properties and then you no know, charge them with embezzlement, the son of this uh president, uh son of this former president, but not the current president. Because uh he's he's apparently benefited from immunity by being a president. Now in 2015, they the France also investigated into Ali Bongo, the, the oyster president's chief of staff, uh, for suspicion of accepting a bribe from a French company to help secure a contract. And uh 2017, uh Macron promised to put an end to no Franca Africa and to make France more neutral to follow former colonies. Basically, you know, not treating them as well, not giving them more benefit, not treating them as equal partners. Uh, if that's a thing in French, uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what's the French word for it. And uh, so, bon so Bongo, you know, take the, did the pragmatic thing. They diversify the partners, and uh, he, Bongo, Gabon, sorry, no, uh, Gabon, Bongo Gabon. These two words is a bit of a similar. Gabon then joined the Commonwealth, the freaking British Commonwealth of all organization that he can join. So uh, so along with Togo, it become the the a country the latest country with no historical tie with the UK decided to join the English speaking club by speaking French. And uh, and uh, however the, the this article by RFI also did highlight that Macron seems to be really friendly with this Ali Bongo. Um so but but if you look at the record it doesn't look like it. It looks like the French uh isn't really that friendly with their family. So the and this coup actually freaks out uh, quite a number of African countries, uh, namely Rwanda and Cameroon, especially Rwanda. Immediately I'm not sure if this plan or it's just coincidence or you know or it's just a jerk reaction. Um the Rwanda and Cameroon Cameroon both announced uh you no know, HR changes for their high ranking military personnel. Especially in Rwanda, uh the president uh, Paul Kagame has retired hundreds of soldiers uh and then that follow promotions of a number of young soldiers so to hit all the different uh, positions so the RF, rdf the rwanda defense force approved uh showed kagame had approved approved so not 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 decided by the president uh the rdf recommended the the retirement of uh, a dozen of generals 83 senior officers and six junior officers Somehow, I do not know why junior officer also get retired. Um, but, you know, it's, a, it's recommended. Kagame only just approve it. And uh, at least 678 soldiers were retired after their contract ended and 160 others were discharged on medical grounds. Uh, so, you know, being a soldier in Rwanda, Defense Force seems to be really, you know, uh, not so healthy for you. So, and, uh, yeah. So, and uh, Cameroon themselves also make new appointments uh, according to a decree made public on social media, you know, but there's not much details about it. So this really, you know, scare the hell out of, you know, some of these uh, African countries. So, of course, we, we have to talk about UN. You know, UN always have something to say when a coup happened. So the Antonio Guterres, you know, with, as the leader of the world via United Nations, can only do condemnations. So he condemned the coup and called all parties to resolve their differences through dialogue. Clearly that is not possible, right? It sounds like a joke. It's like, you know, you know if you have stomach ache, you should you know, eat more poison foods. 
you know, that kind of thing, you know, uh, eat more mushrooms. Anyway, um, the, he said that the use of force or military action is not the way to solve post-election crisis. Oh, he actually knows it's a crisis. I'm surprised. And um, so basically, he called on all actors to exercise restraint and uh, engage in an inclusive, meaningful dialogue, like as if it works in the United Nations so that they can ensure the rule of law and human rights are fully respected, like as if United Nations care. Anyway, uh, yeah, and uh, he, he also, of course, they have to you know, protect the physical integrity of the president and his family. Uh, physical integrity sounds really funny. It's like as if the, the military wanted to tear him apart to multiple pieces. Anyway, of course, Germany, you know, also, you know, say something about, you no, know, they, they are watching and monitoring. And, um, yeah, so he's, but Germans are not bad. They, they actually highlight that there is legitimate criticism of the transparency and the legality of the elections. But they say that it's not up to the military to intervene in the political process with violence. And uh, then came the, the joke, the punchline, you know, punchline, that the governments must be able to decide freely and on their own about their future. Like how? <laughs> the election, you, 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 the whole point of governments to decide their future is through the election. But the election is so broken. <laughs> I'm not sure what the, Germans, uh, the, the German, German foreign ministry is talking about. So anyway... African Union, uh, you know, led by this guy, uh, also known as Morpheus uh, from The Matrix, say that um, he strongly condemns, uh, oh sorry, it's actually Mosa Faki Muhammad, sorry, sorry, uh, my bad, he really looked like Morpheus. He said, you no, know, he strongly condemns the coup, but he didn't condemn the election or the, you know, the, the cutting of the internet. So he says that he's following with great concern and uh, strongly condemned the coup d'etat and uh, as a way to solve current post electoral crisis i'm not sure why everybody says it's an electoral crisis i don't get it like you no know, how else are you going to solve you no know, the, the 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 oyster president trying to take take, take out his own power and uh, he called you no know, the army and the security forces to adhe adhere strictly to their republican vocations and and and, and basically the same thing as well you know as the United Nations. I'm not sure why they say the same thing, but basically everybody just copy and paste and makes no sense to me. And then the African Union have a emergency meeting. So they, they basically met um, the Peace Peace and Security Council. So uh, so according to the statement, uh, they say that um, the meeting was chaired by uh, this, this uh, Commissioner for Political Affairs. Benkole Adiokie of Nigeria and the, the, the current the rotating chair is the Burundi's Willy Nyamiwit. I believe this is the Nyamiwit. Uh, this, this is, I think, I put it, I think this is him. I, I remember it's Burundi. So they met. And uh, what's the meeting division? Uh, they met and then they just decided to, you know, suspend Gabon. And uh, as, 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 as the days goes by, you know, African Union become less African. Uh, it becoming smaller and smaller, so, and um, yeah, they suspend yet another country, and uh, basically that's the first reaction, to and then they co strongly condemn the military coup, and uh, they so they decided to sus suspend Gabon's uh Gabon's uh participation in everything African Union, and uh, with immediate effect, until constitutional order is restored in the country, so yeah. They, they already uh, suspended Burkina Faso, Mali, Guinea, and Sudan, as well as DJ. So now they have another one on their hands. So let's see how this goes. And uh, so Central Africa have their own uh, ECOWAS. It's called the ECAS or the ECCAS. In fact, they have a different, totally different uh, uh, acronym uh, when you use the French spelling. So, you know, so the central, so just know it as the Central African bloc. So the, so the Central African bloc uh, decided to also suspend Gabon uh, membership. So, and uh, this 11 nation immediately suspended Gabon and uh, they have to transfer the headquarters. So uh, very inconveniently, the headquarters of this uh, ICAS or EECCA or you know, just, just Central African bloc, 
uh, it's actually headquartered in Gabon. So now they have to move. So you're going to move next door to Equatorial Guinea. So, uh, so which is here, Equatorial Guinea. So they're just going to move next door, uh, not very far. And uh, it's, so, um, so um, after that, the Central African uh, president, so the uh, Central African Republic, uh, which is the country, not the bloc, uh, have met, appear. He appear in uh, in Gabon and actually meet the new strongman. So this new strongman, this uh, junta leader, is not as a uh, uh, defensive as the Niger one. Uh, this guy actually willing to meet people. So um, Brice Oligwe and Guema actually met with the Central African Republic president Faustin Faustin Osh Inge, Inge, Hoi Adera, oh my freaking god, how to pronounce this name, man. He's Ash Angel, right? So anyway, uh, so this, so, so the Central African Republic president is actually appointed by the bloc, the Central African bloc, as the regional mediator. So he went on uh, to, to facilitate the political process in Gabon. And uh, so that to you know, his, his, his job is to meet all the, Gabonese actors and partners of the countries to ensure a rapid return to constitutional order. And in fact, they actually uh, agree to draft a roadmap to return to democracy. Uh, but uh, this is just a plan. They haven't really drafted anything. So, so he said that he's the facilitator and uh, he will draft a roadmap roadmap for a swift, swift return to the constitutional order with the agreement of the interim president. You know, he, he's very respectful. Uh, and yeah, they they basically merely agreed at this stage to draw up the blueprint and that there's no plan, no timeline, no nothing. So it's very uh, prudent, prudent, very, very prudent. But no, the, within Gabon itself, uh, there is some rumors, you know, this thing went viral. Uh, showing that uh, there's a lot of money in suitcases and boxes uh, and bags uh, allegedly uh, in the residence of the chief of staff of the ousted president, Ali Bongo. Uh, Bongo. So they found this in uh, the chief of staff house of the eldest son of the president. Sorry, it's the, the, the chief of staff of the eldest son of the disposed president. So... Um, yeah, no sprinter, uh, which is uh, pretty famous within the Ukraine war uh, Twitter circle, um, posted this and it went viral. Uh, I cannot confirm this is, I would say this is just rumor. Uh, it, it is circulating in all the smaller sites, but I didn't really see this in bigger news sites. So, the Nguema, actually, uh, the new leader basically say that no, they are not in a rush. Just like the Niger's leader, you no, know, not in the in the rush. Of course, the junta will never be in the rush, but but this one, he said that you will proceed quickly, but surely, but they will want to avoid elections that repeats the same mistakes. I'm not sure how, why is election so difficult, uh, but somehow it seems to be very difficult in Africa. You no, know, it's basically just a piece of paper, marking cross, and then make sure that you no, know, there's a chain of custody all along the way. Uh, to be transparent and make sure that no people can actually see what's happening and uh, no extra votes and everything. So, but somehow, no, it's very difficult in Africa. So anyway, going as quickly as possible does not mean organizing ad hoc elections where they will end up with the same error. So basically, he's saying that uh, they don't want the same people to be elected. So, um, and uh, finally, the, uh, as they take control of everything, everything is in control, uh, very successfully, somehow the military coups are in Africa are all very smooth. Um, the borders reopen after three days. So land, sea, and air borders are all open because the junta is concerned with the preserving the respect for the rule of law, good relationships with neighbors and uh, all the states of the world. And, uh, and they also want to keep international commitments. So that's what they say in the, the spokesman. So you no. Know, it's all, it's all right it's all right and um so the military leader um is then wearing this beautiful red color very uh, eye saw of a uniform uh sworn in as the transitional head of state he is now sworn in, sworn in as the president of gabon 
So he said that you no, know, this patriotic action will be a lesson learned and will be taught in the books of our schools. So he already starting to change the uh, the curriculum already. And um, so that the, he said that the fresh government will be formed in a few days and they will recommend new electoral legislation, new penal codes and, uh, er and a referendum on the new constitution, which I like. I think that uh, that's good though they get the people involved to decide whether the constitution is okay or not. But usually I think it will be passed and unless it, it sounds really ridiculous. So he asked, he, he said that he has instructed the new government to think without delay about freeing all political prisoners. And uh, so this is the promise that he made. And uh, this was broadcast on Gabonese TV and, and online. All the officials, hundreds of officials and former ministers attended. Like, like, yeah, I'm not sure why they are there, but they attended. So, and then the, the former ministers got booed. So, and he said that uh, he, he requests the participation of think tanks to draft new constitution and uh, and it will be adopted by referendum, as I mentioned before. And then he's committed to handling power to the civilians by organi organizing free, transparent elections. Yep, so... And he said that the, the transitional government will be made up of experienced, seasoned people. And uh, yeah, so... So then he he fulfilled his promise and free the political prisoners which is i would say very amazing you know he he really have you know the confidence you know to to just release all the political prisoners and maybe yeah that really by gain him a lot of points in the eyes of the people so so um yeah he freed several people that was held without trial by the government of the ousted president Ali Bongo and uh, it, this include one of the leaders of the trade union the coalition of Gabon state workers uh John Remy Yamar so he was uh, released and uh, along with a number of other people which uh, I don't think you care about their names so so then on top of that he even freed the president so the the former president was under house arrest right so after he you know gained the power he he wear the red color uniform and become the new president he also freed the old president so the the spokesman of the military basically made a statement on the on the 6th of september and uh, announced the freedom of the former president in the broadcast he said given his state of health uh, he's now free to move about and if, if he wants he can travel abroad for medical checkups which is very weird like like you know it's like you no know, bling bling you know the wink wink you know you can go overseas to you know check your health uh, go go please please go <laughs> kind of thing and uh yeah and not to mention i mentioned before he's the cousin I'm not sure if they really, you know, are they in talking terms? I'm really not too sure. Make noise? Hmm, or is it an internal family fight? So, and then uh, in the latest news, uh, he indeed also fulfilled his promise about forming the new government and he appointed um, the, the interim prime minister, uh, Raymond Ngdong Eng Sima. So, basically, uh, in the presidential elect, uh, palace and uh, actually tasked him to propose the government lineup so and uh, this this reminds me of Niger but he's doing all these things much faster than what Niger did so uh, maybe Niger is just a much more messy country and Gabon is much more organized so uh, so did all this happened within days so it's it's amazing how fast uh, he acts and uh, basically uh, this this prime minister say that you no know, he he was given a roadmap and he will try to work in the direction of what the military have determined to restore all the institution especially concerning elections so he said that he will take time uh, for broad consultation so that people belonging to all political families are included uh, in the government so yeah and uh, you have caught up with 
everything that happened in Gabon. So, yeah, this is so the, the situation in Gabon is very, very interesting. It's, it's like Niger, but nicer, <laughs> but nicer. Yeah, it's like so nice. Like, you know, the Niger currently, the, the, the president, I think, is still under house arrest. And uh, there is all this uh, threat of war and everything, but no, Gabon, nobody cares. No, nobody wants to invade it. Uh, nobody know that the ECAS is so nice. They just say that, you know, we're going to send a representative, then let's talk it out, you know, and let's, let's help, let us help you, you know, get back to democracy. Yeah, so anyway, thank you for watching. This video is long enough. Press the like button, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm very curious. And I'll see you in the next update.